about to get some Mickey D's purely for research. Usually not my go-to stop, but you know, sometimes it hits the spot. I wanted to do some price comparison because I feel like the price of these drive through places have been going up exponentially. We're just gonna see how expensive it is to just get normal stuff. Hi, can I get a number one, a number four spicy deluxe? And then can I do a number five? That's everything. I love these new McDonald's. They have like the two drive ups and like the two pickup windows. Advancements in drive through technology. It looks like they also had an option to order on the app and then pick up. Let me tell you, McDonald's was already convenient and now they're trying to make it even more convenient. I like to call this the food court or fast food alleys. There is a Jack in the Box, a Del Taco, a Jimmy John, a McDonald's, and a Subway, and a Wendy's, and an Arby's. All your heart's desires. That's everything. Ooh, you're 55. Okay, a bit pricey. Have you ever heard of a drive through Subway? Oh my gosh, this is kind of pricey. Bacon's extra, avocado's extra, fresh mozzarella, extra. Uh, number 12, number 30. Here, I think that should be everything. Just go ahead and pull for it. Okay, thank you. All this was not cheap. Are you sick of spending so much money at the drive-thru? Here's how to save a fortune and it's just as convenient. Here's my quick and easy chicken and rice. Rice is one of my favorite ingredients. I use it a lot. A whole lot. And this all happens right in the rice cooker. Giving this rice a rinse, and the only rule here is ratios. For every cup of rice, we do about a cup and a half of liquid. I'm going with a vegetable broth, but bouillon is awesome here too. This is where the customization comes in, adding vegetables, proteins, and seasonings. A little ground oregano, just a little bit of paprika. You can grate in some fresh garlic, but I just had some garlic powder on hand. A little green bell pepper. I have some red bell pepper. Give this a little stir. A little S&P to taste. Adding a little protein with some chicken. Just a little touch of olive oil. And one of my favorite smoky seasoning blends. $6.99 per pound, and then the chicken is $3.99 per pound. So let's go look at the pre-packaged, see if it's any different. Ooh, this is cheaper. This is cheaper per pound. But sometimes if they're running a sale at the meat counter, you can get a better deal than the packaged stuff. I always usually just double check the prices, price per pound. This goes right on top. Don't mix it in. I'm adding in a little bit of smoked sausage too. I guess I'm making like a one pot jambalaya. I don't know. Play around with flavors. It doesn't have to be so specific all the time. You can really mix things up and do soy and sesame. Switch up the vegetables with mushrooms shrooms, green beans, or broccoli florets, or taco rice with some black beans. Let that cooker do its thing. It should take 20 to 30 minutes. When the slow cooker is done, let it sit for 15 minutes before you remove the lid. Chicken and rice is one of my favorite meals. And then fluff it up with a fork. Oh, that smells so good. With a rice cooker, who needs drive through this is beyond crazy. I did not even know this was here. This has no context for this video. We we're just trying to find a cool spot to vlog and hang out. This is so cool. A while back, I did this video about budget-friendly meals. When it comes to affordable ingredients, you can't beat rice. So that's what I'm doing again. Wanted to read some of the comments from it. Perfect for college students, I'm broke AF. <laughs> I feel like all of us are feeling a little broke AF right now. Just everything's so expensive. I'm always nervous when cooking with chicken. Anyone got any tips? Don't cook like a whole chicken breast if you're beginning out, if you're new to cooking. Do small dices, cause that'll cook in just a few minutes in a skillet versus trying to cook a chicken breast all the way through. Pre-cook the tater tots. No one likes the taste of raw uncooked taters. Tater tots are actually already cooked. You're just reheating them. So that's why it works on the casserole because you're just heating them through. Stop wasting your money on processed pre-packaged meals. You can eat better and save money with these ingredients. Let me show you my easiest dry bean chili. If you've never cooked with dry beans, it's so easy and this will be your tutorial. I'm starting with pinto beans. You can do red beans, a bean medley. Chili, any bean works. I'm looking for about a pound of beans. You wanna rinse and look for anything that shouldn't be in there and everything right into the crock pot. I'm using chicken broth. You can use water, but I like something with flavor. For a pound of beans, you're looking for anywhere between six and eight cups. I just eyeball it. As long as it's covered by about an inch or two of liquid, you'll be good. Anything goes to flavor your beans. Spices can be expensive, so I go for the bulk value variety. The bag spices, or even if you can get bulk spices, these are so affordable. Like you can clean up on spices. So 99 cent per ounce, now the name brand stuff, $2 per ounce, 188 per ounce. Insane difference. So yeah, these bags, much, much cheaper for the spices. 
cumin. This stuff smells so good. I'm doing some ground oregano too. I'm feeding a crowd, so let's keep the spice to a minimum, but I can't resist a little cayenne. Garlic, yep, we're still on spices. I mean, it's chili after all. Chili uses just about every seasoning in your cabinet. Can't forget black pepper. To start off, only do a little bit of salt. We're gonna finish with more salt at the end. You can dice up your favorite veggies and throw those in too. If you're short on time and knife skills, take a shortcut. Frozen prepared vegetables can be helpful and affordable. So that's the thing, bell, fresh bell peppers were like 79 cents, but this whole package is 146, which is pretty cheap and they're already cut up. So it's like a shortcut. Give everything a good stir, set it and forget it. So I like a little texture in my chili, especially chili with beans. So usually I do like a ground meat, a ground turkey, a ground beef, and I like to add a chunkier meat. This is just some carne asada all cut up. This has a few more hours to go, so I'm gonna add in some ground beef and my stew meat. Cooking the beans first gives them a little bit of a head start so they're nice and tender. Acid like in tomatoes can make beans tough, so I add the tomato sauce near the end of the cooking. For my chili, I've always used diced tomatoes. I never thought of using crushed tomatoes. I like the texture of the crushed tomatoes. Tomato sauce, you'll get too like runny of a chili. Diced tomatoes, it's like super chunky. It's a lot of texture. I've always made my chili with crushed tomatoes. You get the texture and it's not as soupy. A few more hours left, those flavors will combine and we have delicious chili. So affordable, super easy, and way better than anything in a can. One thing I like to do, especially if I'm pressed for time, is I'll add groceries right into the grocery store app. And then that way you can keep track of what your budget is. So say you have $100 to spend on groceries this week. If you're loading up your cart in the store, you may go over that budget really easily. But if you're shopping on the app, then you can be a little bit more picky and choosy about what you add to your cart. I also like that the app shows you what you bought last or what you normally buy so that you don't have to search for it. $2.69. This is a ton of sauce. Store brand. Save some money. Big price difference here. $1.43 for a box. One pound versus $2.47. Pick and choose your battles. If you like a certain brand, you're gonna get value out of it, why not? I like this, on the price, it says what the unit price is. So 23 cents per ounce. If we compare that to maybe this, which is 48 cents per ounce. So the labels actually help you that this is gonna be more expensive, already shredded cheese, than getting a whole block of cheese and shredding it yourself. That's actually pretty cool. So shred this yourself and you're almost paying half the price for cheese. When it comes to dinner, don't get left holding the bag. Here's a better dinner to put some money back into your wallet. I'm gonna show you an effortless dry pasta lasagna. So easy, no pre-boiling, the noodles required. I'm just starting off with a thin layer of sauce. Many lasagnas use a ricotta mixture. I like a cream sauce, like an Alfredo instead. Since these noodles need moisture, this will give it a lot of richness, a lot of creaminess. Going in with a little bit of cheese. Keep stacking, keep building. I think I'm going for four layers. Most lasagnas have about four or five layers. Kind of depends on your dish but you wanna use a lot of sauce because that's what the pasta is going to absorb. Last layer, just a generous dose of sauce and cheese. More cheese, please. And a little Parmesan. Spray a little foil so the cheese doesn't stick to the top. Seal it up nice and tight. You wanna lock in all that moisture, all that steam. Once assembly's done, you can even fridge this and bake it the next day. I have my oven set to 350, right inside. And that'll need to bake for about an hour. This just came out of the oven. I just wanna make sure those noodles are done and then we're gonna brown the top. Clean right through, no resistance. Those noodles are perfect. This goes back in for about 10 minutes just to get that top nice and brown. Nice and crispy edges. And here's the key with lasagna. You have to let this sit for like 20 minutes before you cut into it. All those beautiful layers at a fraction of the price. Now that's beefy five layer lasagna. But we don't have the physical or emotional energy to cook because we are overwhelmed and underpaid. <laughs> well, that's a very strong comment and I get it. I definitely understand. But grocery shopping and cooking doesn't work for everybody, but budgeting for your meals does work for everybody. This is my biggest tip because I do this all the time before you go get groceries, check what you have at home. Cause we tend to waste a lot of money and time buying things we already have to just let what we already had go to waste. Controlling food waste is gonna save you a ton of money. And it's just better for everybody to not just waste all this food. Oh no, the little cans are cheaper. Well, ain't that interesting. This is when it says three for four, you don't always have to get three. If you use the discount, you can get like one or two at the sale price. Just the three for four entices you to buy more. 
<laughs> some of these comments. Yeah, but when you factor in time, going to the store, making it, and some people don't have nice kitchens. You don't have to have a nice kitchen to make a nice meal. Actually, we should do, I just had a video idea, like making a week's worth of meals in a tiny New York kitchen. You just have to find what works for you and your situation. He reminds me of Julia Child because he said, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Julia Child would have come on like PBS when I was like really young. That's when I first started loving cooking and learning how to cook. So yeah, Julia Child was like one of the first and only. Tired of overpaying for delivery? Here's how to eat great pizza for less. This homemade pizza dough is fast, cheap, and easy. Every good pizza starts with dough. It's incredible that people pay so much for pizza when the ingredients are flour, water, and salt. You can't get much cheaper than that. A little sugar to help retain the moisture and salt for flavor. Warm water to make the yeast nice and happy. Just a little bit of oil. Just want this to run on low until it all combines. If your dough's looking a little dry, you can add a touch more water, or if it's looking too wet and sticky, add a little bit more flour. I'm gonna let this run about five minutes to help develop that gluten. The mixer is gonna do all the kneading for me. No worries if you don't have a mixer, this can all be done by hand. This comes together 10 minutes in the morning, let it slow proof in the fridge, and then it's ready for dinner. That dough rose nicely, time to bake. Little olive oil. I'm doing a sheet pan pizza, but you can do round pies on a pizza stone in the oven. This oven is scorching already, 500 degrees, about as high as your oven can go. Nice and crispy bottom. Give that dough a head start in the oven about 10 minutes. Sauce and top with your favorite ingredients. Just a little olive oil around those edges. Some garlic, plenty of cheese. All the pepperoni you can deal out. Last touch, get some grated Parmesan around the crust. Back into the inferno for about another 10 to 15 minutes. Hot and fresh out of your own oven. Delivery who? Now that's saving some dough. Guac is extra, unless you make it at home. Your favorite like restaurant meals or like to-go meals, a lot of times you can do the same thing at home for far cheaper. And what you're paying Chipotle, <laughs> you could may have like 20 meals, you know, at home, because rice and beans are so cheap. This is nothing against the restaurants and the chains. But yeah, if you're thinking about it, $7 for a Subway sandwich, bread and meat and cheese, and you can put as much meat on as you want it. You can put all the toppings you want gonna still be far cheaper and better quality. It's just the fact of the matter. Don't drive yourself crazy. If you're trying to save money, just start small, you know? Start at the places that you can control, right? So it's not about having the world's cheapest meals. It's just about saving a few dollars and being more conscious of where you spend your money. I remember growing up, I mean, I'm the oldest of five kids. So my parents did what they could to like stretch every meal and make sure everybody had enough. When you have multiple mouths to feed, the dollars count. The dollars and cents add up. Yes, that's all true, but the time and energy to shop and cook, find shortcuts when you can. Shortcuts don't have to be expensive. I do grocery pickup on my way home or while I'm out running other errands, pick up my groceries, bring them back home. I feel like I'm getting a little ranty. I'm passionate about this money-saving meal stuff. I guess that's the thing with Problem Solved. Where everybody sees a problem, I find that there's some alternative that's easier or better. 